Hello friends, this is John Ross, principal of Lionville Middle School and proud president of the Pennsylvania Principals Association, coming to you with my monthly vlog for the month of May, uh, proudly sponsored by our friends at Lexia Learning. Before I get started, just a reminder to click like and subscribe. Every time you click like, every time you subscribe to the PA Principals Association, it helps us further our message. It helps us be become better advocates for you. It, it does so much for us as an association to spread the word. Um, even if you don't sit through the whole video, click like and subscribe uh, because this is how we begin to spread the word and let folks know about the great work you all are doing. And it's not just about me. Uh, I hope you know we have uh, other videos where we spotlight and highlight the work that you're doing. And I would encourage you to check those out and submit an entry uh, for those as well. So. Uh, this month, I want to talk to you about catching up. Uh, we're starting to, we have been for some time uh, during COVID, during the pandemic, hearing a lot about how are they going to catch the kids up? We've got to catch them up. All this work they're missing, all the content they're missing, we've got to do catch up. And, uh, you know, now that we're getting into the summer, I'm sure many of you are involved in plans for some form of summer academy, summer school, summer programming. Uh, and also beginning to kind of start to think about next year and, and maybe what your plans are going to be uh, for the start of the next school year uh, once you find out what your learning model is going to be at least. Um, so, you know, the last 14 months uh, has really shown us one thing, in my opinion, and, and it's emboldened me in a belief that I had prior to COVID, and, and that is just how important it is that we make sure every single child in our care has a meaningful and important and valued relationship with an adult in our school. Uh, we've always talked about that and we've always kind of believed it and we've always done things to uh, reinforce that, but being separated completely for extended periods of time and then slowly but surely coming back. And I know we still have a lot of people that are in various forms of learning models right now, hybrid, all in person, some virtual, all virtual, what have you. Uh, but no matter what the situation, uh, if you talk to students that are currently in, in schools and you talk to their teachers and you ask them about what the last 14 months have been like and, and what they've liked and what they haven't liked and what's one thing that you missed, I'd be willing to bet that a large, large majority of those who would respond to that are going to say they miss the relationships. They miss the relationships with their peers. And yes, they even miss the relationships with the adults who, who they work with each day. Um, we know that relationships are important. We've known that for, for some time, um, but we've always tried to balance that, right? We've thought, oh, I've got to spend time on the curriculum. I've got to spend time on the content, but I've got to make time for relationships uh, at, at the same time. But I'm starting to really believe that relationships are way, way more important than the curriculum and then the content. I, I, I've always kind of believed that in the back of my mind. And I think what we've been through recently is really proving that. It's really solidifying it in my mindset that, you know, we can't just jump right into the curriculum at the start of the year or even at the start of a summer program uh, because we're thinking, oh, I've only got so much time. I've got to get to this content by this point of the year and then this point of the year. And I've got to get it all in there uh, because testing's around the corner or the end of the year is around the corner. And we just, we have the nerve to, to then be annoyed or disappointed or upset when it doesn't sink in. Well, we know if you don't spend the time, you know, fostering that relationship, cultivating like you would something that you're growing, um, then you only have yourself to blame when the growth doesn't happen. And so uh, I would encourage all of our principals, all of our educational leaders to really begin to rethink the way that we do things and look at things through a different lens and, and examine what our priorities are really when we do instruction and when we provide instruction and, and guidance to our kids, both in summer programming and also at the start of our year and as our new years get moving. So we're going to take a quick break and hear a message from our friends at Lexia Learning. And then I'll be right back with the rest of my vlog about just how we can start that catching up process. Welcome to Lexia Learning, where we are dedicated to changing lives through the power of language and literacy education so every student can thrive and succeed in the world around them. 
Founded through a research grant over 35 years ago, Lexia has created some of the most rigorously researched and respected reading programs in the world, which has earned strong ratings from Evidence for ESSA for both of our learning solutions in elementary and secondary education. Lexia's literacy solutions, including Lexia Core 5 Reading and Lexia Power Up Literacy, are independently evaluated, research-proven, and results-driven. Lexia's adaptive blended learning model and patented assessment without testing technology are at the heart of its programs, with a focus on all areas of reading, from word recognition and academic language to comprehension. Lexia's innovative solutions facilitate personalized learning experiences for all students and scalable partnerships with education stakeholders. Experience Lexia's award-winning programs through the eyes of students and educators using this interactive demo. To learn even more, click Contact My Rep in the navigation bar. All right, we're back. Thanks again to Lexia Learning for sponsoring the PA Principals Association and sponsoring my president's vlog. So now that we're rethinking what catching up looks like, where are some areas where we can do that, right? So let's think about summer schools, summer academies, and a lot of folks are planning things right now. You know, to me, we have to break the mold and get away from traditional summer school. When I think I kind of shudder thinking about some of the stuff I used to do as a principal at summer school, you know, traditional drill and kill and catch up on here's the things you missed and we got to get this into your head meanwhile it's 90 plus degrees and beautiful outside and the kids are thinking about all the fun their friends are having you know that just doesn't work so let's let's do things we've always wanted to do you know we're here we're together let's engage in some things let's run book clubs let's do collaborative learning uh, project-based learning things that are really going to get them active and you know try to break that mold and of what traditional summer school looks like um, how about the start of the year? You know, now that summer's over and we're back and we're going to have all of our students together and whatever learning model we have, there's ways that we can change how we begin the year. You know, I, I kind of stole an idea from a neighboring district a couple of years ago, which I know we all do, of uh, starting the school year doing team building and get to know you activities and collaboration and breaking the ice and finding out who we are and you know, you want to talk about things like diversity, like that's where you learn about people, right? Like that, those relationships, building those bonds and getting to know your history and my history and you telling me more about the experiences you have is just going to enrich me and give me a better understanding of who you are. So as we go through this journey together of a school year, we have a better understanding of each other and, and helps prevent a lot of misunderstandings and potential problems. So you know, building those bonds again and forming those relationships, teacher to teacher, teacher to student, student to student, spending some time. You've got time. Why rush into those academics, especially, you know, around that Labor Day time of the year when uh, our heads are usually still in the summer. So the last thing I would say uh, about catching up is it's an opportunity for us to rethink what's really important in our curriculum. What are the things that we really want our children to learn? Um, I know a lot of us have moved toward a, a focus on 21st century skills and, you know, meaningful things that, that children are going to be able to take with them as they move on year to year to year, post-secondary and, and into their lives. You know, creative thinking, critical thinking, um, communication, collaboration, you know, things that they're going to need no matter what their career path is. And we talk all the time about jobs, you know, being created that we don't even know exist yet. So learning those types of skills and, and how about job related skills? You know, we've got to stop this mindset, this train that's running that tells all of our kids, you have to go to college in order to be successful. I don't buy that. I haven't bought that for several years and I'm learning it firsthand. You know, how difficult is it right now to find a great, an electric, a great electrician, a quality HVAC person, and, and how great is it when you do find one of those people and how much are you willing to pay that person, right? A great car mechanic, oh my gosh. You know, if you find a reliable, great, uh, skilled labor person like that, you'll pay just about any price knowing that you're getting that quality work. So here we are, the people that went through college and we're paying through the nose to the people that went right into those job fields. So, you know, let's get away from the mindset of, you have to go to college in order to be successful. No, you have to find out where your interests lie and maximize those and give our kids opportunities to follow different paths 
rather than saying it has to be one particular path for them. Uh, I'll close with this, you know, the one of my heroes, I'm an older guy, right? So the 1980 Miracle on Ice team, big hockey fan. You see the flyer stuff up there. We're not going to talk about their season. But uh, Herb Brooks, coach of the 1980 U.S. Olympic hockey team, when he was leading up to the Olympics, said to his players, if we're going to beat the Russians, we can't be the same old, same old. If we're going to do something that's never been done before, we can't be the same old, same old. Um, and I said I'd end with that, but it's making me think of another great quote from a former principal colleague of mine. And I use this one a lot, so my friends know that I, that I say this quite frequently. The only thing good about banging your head against the wall is it feels good when you stop. So let's stop banging our head against the wall and putting all of our focus on standards and curriculum. And let's work in some of those relationships and some of those real life skills and some of the stuff that's really going to benefit our children. And I think when we do that, we're helping to build a better foundation for when the time comes to focus on curriculum. And then it's going to lead to a better performance in the long run. So when it comes time to catch up, I guess what I'm saying is rethink what catching up means to you. Because I think that's how we grow as educational leaders. And that's how we take our children to the next level. Post uh, post COVID, it's going to be quite the challenge, but I'm looking forward to going through it with you all. Thanks again for uh, watching my vlog. Please again, don't forget to hit like and subscribe. And thanks so much to our friends at Lexia Learning for sponsoring the PA Principals Association. Uh, I'll talk to you all soon. I'm not sure if I'll hit you next month or if June's going to get the best of me, but I'll give it a shot. But in case I don't, I hope everyone has a great finish to your school year and uh, we'll talk to you during the summer. Thank you.